Hello, this is Dr. Fran Grace, reading an anonymous booklet that was written by a dear friend. One of the most devoted students of truth and spiritual life, healing, and compassion that I have ever met. This friend survived childhood abuse and spent many decades healing on every level, psychological, physical, mental, and spiritual. This little booklet is short and shares an experience, not in graphic terms, but in terms of realness, what the feelings can be like, and what the hope has been. This person, before they passed away out of the physical life, completed this personal writing to share with others anonymously. It's such a great example that what we leave behind is what we ourselves have become. And if in our life we have traveled into our own inner darkness and we have lit a candle there and then we share that light that helps to light the candles of others within their inner darkness, then our life has become truly a gift. So this little booklet, We Are Survivors, is a gift. We Are Survivors by Anonymous Dear Courageous Ones, you have begun reading this open letter. Please continue to read only if you feel it would be beneficial for you. If the quiet inner voice leads you to discontinue reading, I think you'd be wise to follow your guidance. The material is in no way graphic, but even so, the subject matter can be triggering. This writing is about my healing, from hopelessness to hope, from despair to belief in life, and from self-hatred to trust in myself and others. Now I enjoy a life on a scale which had seemed for so long out of my reach. It's not that I float on a heavenly cloud, I have my ups and especially downs, but depression no longer rules my life. This in itself is a miracle. As an example, yesterday was a hard day. It was raining, and I'm sensitive to the weather. I couldn't get up enough energy and will to crawl out of the doldrums. Today, the sun is out, and I feel much better. On days like the rainy one, it's a struggle for me to remember that emotions are fluid and that this, too, will pass. In the larger scope of things, this day's mood is only one day's mood. Many years ago, I read a poem about a tree and its right to be. Desperately, I wanted to know that I had just as much right to be as did the tree. This longing proved to be the beginning of my healing. I'm a woman in my late 70s. My father sexually abused me for about a decade, beginning in my early childhood. At that time and place, who would have taken a child's word over that of a respectable adult? Here's a poem I wrote. I know what it's like to lie sleepless in bed, waiting, 
I know what it's like to lose my soul and to live in the frozen fear it will never return. I know what it's like to have a split-off part which carried the knowledge so I could go on. I know what it's like to not know who I am and to stand in the rubble of despair. I've been there. Two strands have been braided together in my life. The strand of my hard work and the strand of the grace of God. Without either, I would still be drowning in a sea of bitterness and despair. My life began to become my own about 35 years ago when suddenly I remembered. I was walking alone in the woods when out of the blue a cascade of repressed memories imploded inside my head. My drunken father, me, sexual images, a little body. It was a cacophony of chaos and confusion. I was stunned. Virtually every evening as dusk came around, I lost my soul. This is the only way I know to describe the terror, the horror. Everyone and everything seemed to move out and away, and I was left in a circle of aloneness. It was exquisitely painful. Could this have been hell? Did I go to hell and back each evening to try to retrieve my soul? My hell was an ocean of infinite hopelessness. These descents into such dense darkness haven't happened in a long time. Yet my heart still shrivels at the thought that they might return. That pain seemed limitless. And no one asked me if there was anything wrong. Hell is a solitary experience. Here's another poem I wrote. Pain is my truth and suffering is my world. All is hard, edges sharp. My will wonders if it's worth the while. Tears tell a story of a journey too long that sits in my heart like a stone rocking the limits of memory. Can I stay centered on pain when pain is all I have? Can I look myself in the eye and follow my pain back home? Who was I? At times I would look in the mirror and the self, capital S, would reflect back to me. A light was in my eyes. This pure acknowledgement stirred my soul and probably saved my life. He was dying when I remembered the child in me was afraid she would have to die for him as she had had to live for him. Remembering, then, became the safe haven. On the one hand, there were decades of looking at my life one way. On the other hand, there was a walk in the woods which changed everything. 
What do I mean by healing? Here are some of my thoughts. You will have your own. Healing means to be able to love, to have at least one close friend, to be able to look after oneself, to have strong boundaries and to open to what is healthy and to close to what is injurious, to have self-knowledge and self-respect, to seek higher truth and be faithful. Please don't be discouraged by this long list of attributes. They rest on a spectrum and are always more or less. They are never black or white. My teacher taught us that it's relatively unimportant where we are on the path. What matters is that we are on the path. You are on the path because you're reading about healing. In clarity, there is strength and depth. Healing is not trying to paint over the pain of the past, nor is it reaching for near perfection. It is not an exact science, and there is no right way. What constitutes healing for you, only you can say. For myself, I can say that I have healed more than I ever could have imagined a few years ago. This doesn't mean that I'm far along on the path. It means that I'm on the path. If the primary purpose of life is our spiritual growth, and I believe it is, and if all that happens has a part in that growth, as I believe it does, then a deeper understanding and acceptance of our lives will be healing. Comparison doesn't yield understanding, even in similar seeming circumstances. Each person has their own path, and some must walk through an arid, joyless land. Others will have paths which are less or more painful and arduous. There are many types and combinations of abuse, and no matter how we sort and file them, most can have serious and long-ranging effects. Comparison only diverts us from focusing on our own healing. Let's suppose we set out together to sew patchwork quilts. We have each saved patches of painful emotions and memories. We fit them into patterns and sew the patches together. My quilt cannot be compared to your quilt because my patches differ. And no one can truly say that one quilt is superior or inferior to the other. We can say, though, that both have the potential to keep us warm. Self-doubt nearly drove me out of my mind. In the fog of unknowing, I could see only traces of my abuse. Was I lying and denigrating my father? Did I inflate a one-time event into ten years of abuse? The prosecutor in me would torment me with those tough questions. Yet deep down, I knew that the process of facing the truth, acknowledging it, and allowing the healing of it was cleansing the muddy waters of negativity. I had no desire to expose, blame, or shame. Buried deep in my psyche, my core knows the abuse to be true and that I have the right to express it. I don't need to defend 
or second guess myself. It is the deniers who are lying. An opposing lie is that we are too damaged to heal. Yes, there are scars. We cannot change the past, but we can separate from it. We can be kinder and more gentle with ourselves and others. Softness, along with boundaries, is a long stride toward self-respect worthiness, and healing. I had wandered the world with confusion and self-loathing. I had experienced life through a prism of depression and despair. It had seemed there was no way home. It was the split-off part of my inner child who mainly carried the burden of not remembering. After all, it was she who suffered the abuse, and singling her out was vital to my integration. Children know only what they have experienced. For wounded children, this is heartbreaking. My inner child needed to be homeschooled. The curriculum was love, tenderness, patience, understanding, kindness, and other subjects about growth. In time, my child joined the rest of myself and was made whole. Here's a poem I wrote. From what you were taught, my child, it is different now. The old no longer serves the new. To be safe is to hang back no more, but to stand at the edge. Here, stand with me and put your toes on the line with eternity. For this is where all magic happens. Here, together now, in this moment. I think that every wounded person needs a guide to travel along with them, to believe in them, and to be a calm and steady influence for them. The guide mirrors their growth and wholeness and brings them back to the present again and again. I have a therapist who meets me here. We have worked together for four years. I plan to continue for as long as my mind and body will allow. In my experience with therapists, her skill and devotion to my healing are unparalleled. With all my heart, I'm grateful to her. I trust that you, too, will find the healer you may need. The present is the safest time zone we have. The past was defiled by abuse, and the future is unknown. The present simply is. If we can reside in isness, There's no trauma or worry, and we are no longer victims. Accordingly, my spiritual teacher maintained that there is no answer to the question, why? This theoretical question can lead us astray. I have faith that in some larger understanding, the universe rebalances and all that happens makes sense. I cannot parse life's mysteries. I can only make peace with what has happened to me.
In order to keep my balance and soundness of mind, I had to inch my way to and through what had transpired. I had tormented myself with the question, if and why and how. Rising out of victimhood, the perspective of my childhood and subsequent life has changed over the years. Abusers were themselves abused. Inherited brutality is passed down the family tree until it reaches our own branches. One way or another, we will pass it on, unless we are healed from the desecration we endured. My path has been a winding way. It's been long and hard and worth it beyond measure. To my eternal relief, I now know that my soul has remained constant. There are many rewards along the way, and each reward motivated me to continue the search for the self, capital S. Gradually, my world got larger and began to write itself. No longer did I have to memorize how to be in the world and to repeat my role by rote. The lens I look through now is not trained on my debasement. What a joy to experience my life in the present. We are survivors, no longer victims. When we can feel this startling distinction, we stand taller, straighter, and act with greater purpose. We walk the path of the hero, and if we never give up, we will circle around and return home changed. How better then can we live our lives? I'll close with a poem that I wrote. Hope leaps as the wind runs through the trees and the leaves spin around each one tied on differently. Joy abounds as sunlight splatters through the branches in patterns known only to themselves. Now this leaf Now that one plunges into the foreground and dances its dance, doing what no one has ever done before. With love and respect, your friend.